Hello! Welcome to Earth. It doesn't have anything to do with this video. I don't know why I said that. Anyway, hello. Welcome to my channel. On this channel, I talk about random things that have been on the internet. Maybe in real life, maybe that'll happen. Maybe I'll do vlogs, I don't know. But basically, um, recently I've been scrolling on TikTok and this one guy keeps popping up or like parodies of him keep popping up. And it's this guy and all he does is he stands in front of a cutting board. He cuts veggies or something. I don't even, I've never actually seen the whatever he's cutting. I just know he has a knife and he's doing this motion. Basically what he does is he, while he's cutting air, um, he is talking about random things that usually really made no sense. This guy's name is O Montaigne, which is probably my reaction to this guy. O Montaigne, what are you doing, bro? I just found this guy, so I'm going to um talk about him. I feel like TikTok and everyone on TikTok has this obsession with making the really either bad people or the cringy people famous. I don't think he's done anything wrong, but he's definitely probably cringe. I think he's mostly popular from this weird hate song that he put out. Like in one line, he was talking about the haters and he says something like, the haters are only mad cause they bored. Oh, the hate comments only happen cause they bored. He's trying to say cause they're bored, but it's so funny because it sounds like he says Kyareba. Kyareba. <laughs> Everybody on the comments of his TikToks are now just commenting Kyareba. They really do be bored. Anyway, I'm gonna watch some of these, which probably will be a little bit painful because um, I've seen some of these already and they're not very good. Bruh. All right, here's the most objective way to tell whether or not someone's hot. Uh, just ask to see their passport photo, even if you're on a first date with them. <laughs> What? That's so weird. If anyone on a first date asks for my passport photo, I would think that they're like a spy or something looking to like assassinate me. Just go, hey, uh, by the way, I saw you look really cute, obviously online and in person. You're stunning. I just, I just need uh? to confirm. Can I check your passport photo? And they're like, we're on a first date. No, you can't check my passport photo. Just get up and leave because they're clearly hiding something. So weird. What would they be hiding in a passport photo? Like, what if maybe they were emo back then? Okay, they got their passport photo taken when they were emo, and now they're not. They're not clearly hiding anything, they just don't know who you are, and you're gonna look like a weirdo to ask for a passport photo. A first date. Are you kidding me, bro? Imagine someone does that. Hey, I know we just got here, but like, can I see your passport photo? Why? I, um, huh? I didn't even bring it. You didn't bring it, huh? Ugh, you're clearly hiding something. Um, no, I just... We're not flying to a different country. Right. Um, well, you should have it anywhere because what if you're going on a date with someone like right now? You need to have your passport photo ready. Like, what the heck? Okay, um, bye. They're scared that they know they don't look good in their passport photo because they're objectively not hot. I don't get this. Like, what, what does he mean by objectively not hot? Like, if you see them in person and you think that they look good, isn't that enough? Like, what does he think that people see the passport photo more than your actual self? It's not like people just like print out a photo of their passport and then put it on their face and then walk around like that. This guy think he ate. <laughs> he really thought he ate. Actually, he's probably not even eating anything because he's not cutting anything. On that cut a board, cutting board, because like, cutting, 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 boy. Never mind. Hey, soulmates are not real. I repeat, soulmates are not real. Okay, bro. Who oh. hurt him? Maybe you met someone at the perfect time. Maybe you met someone in the perfect place. Maybe you were just doing so goddamn well that anyone you met was going to feel like your soulmate. And because you put a lot of work into it. But I'm telling you, just because now you're broken up and you're overthinking it, they were not your soulmate. What does he mean? <laughs> Like, even if you're trying to make a relationship work, if they're a bad person or you just don't like vibe, you know, like vibe with them, it's not gonna work. Not everyone's gonna feel like a soulmate. I mean, to be honest, like there is always going to be that one person that is more for you. There's people that will match with you better than other people. Like for example, me, if I was in a relationship with this guy, I would never think that he would be my soulmate. Oh my God, that hair is too bouncy. Like I'd probably like, I'd touch it, I'd get flinged away. What is it that makes the people that you see like in an airport when you're on a trip just so effing goddamn hot? Like you, you're like, your brain tells yourself, I see that person in a bar. Maybe I look twice at them. Maybe I'm like, it's just a normal person. Whoa, same girl at airport look cool, but not at bar. What? I mean, to be fairly honest, I would think that bar lighting is better anyway. I mean, I guess if you're like getting drunk and like all like, bleh. 
maybe you're not too attractive at a bar. I get what he means though. Like sometimes, sometimes at the airport, I'll see like some, some fine dude over there. I get sad because my plane is about to leave and then this guy is over there and I'm like, dang it, I'm never gonna see him again. For me, I probably don't look like one of those people that everybody would be like, oh my gosh. Because usually it's in the morning I have to go to the airport. So if I wake up and like my face is all baby and like I have like eye bags and I don't think anyone's gonna, you know. And so he's still, still chopping away at something. I just see the knife, but maybe he's cutting his fingers off. Here's why you always have to dress well when you leave the house. I don't care what you're doing. Let's say you're getting groceries. Let's say you're doing laundry. Let's say you need to go pick up a hammer or something from the pharmacy or anything. Those are all fine. You want to dress like a bum, feel bummy. Okay, that's fine. Now imagine you run into your ex and their new partner. That's great. <laughs> well, I wouldn't run into an ex at all because I got none. Bruh. No, but like genuinely, why would you? Like you're not even with this person anymore. Why should you care what they think anymore? It's actually not good because then you're trying to like, showing them that, oh, you still care that you want them to... Like, you're trying- Oh my god, I cannot speak, bro. This guy is, dude is not helping my speakability. Or you run into someone you haven't seen in five years. Or you run into someone you're meant to go on a date with in five days. And you want their impression of you after them either not having seen you for a while or them before they're about to go on a date with you or your ex to see you like a bum? No. You have to be up at all times. That's too much work. Bro, I'm putting on sweatpants and some Barbie shirt to go to the pharmacy or whatever. I'm not, I'm not dressing up. Who cares if I see someone that I'm gonna have a date with? Actually, it's better to see them in their state of decay <laughs> and always in their state of glory because then that means that you're just always gonna see something that isn't completely real, you know? When I go to the store to pick up cabbage, just cabbage because I forgot it or something, I'm not going to be wearing stilettos. <laughs> like I know some people might do this. Like they might, I guess, really, really still be attached to their ex that they would really want them to um, see them in public looking good or something. But they probably only do that because they would. Because they would. get a girl 100% foolproof method. Does he mean walking up to them, looking scared, and then backing up? Bro, if someone did this to me, I would be confused. I didn't know this guy was so like tall and stiff though. Is he just like, why is he so square? <laughs> the bag. Like genuinely, what does this video even mean? Run away from them and then you'll get a girl. Opposite, I think you have to run forward, forward to them. Um, Without a doubt, one of the worst, most humbling. Vegetable. He is cutting something. Oh, that's new information, guys. I thought bro was just like getting a knife and slicing his hand or nothing. Or I guess just the cutting boy. Feelings in the entire world as a man has nothing to do with rejection, has nothing to do with a breakup, relationship, anything having to do with that, even their ego and pride. It has to do, and this is every guy can pretty much relate to this, or I'll say every guy who watches sports. There comes a point where every man in their mid-20s, as they get older, starts to realize that all the athletes they've grown up idolizing who have always been older than them are now the same age or younger. Wait, what? How does that make sense? So is bro trying to say that athletes don't age? You grow up, mm-hmm, and then they also grow up, right? He trying to say that like they got to the point where they're also that age, like from what they were idolizing before? Like, yeah, duh. Isn't that just like how it works? You grew up, great, you know. Why is this humbling? Let's check it out. And for every guy throughout their life watching sports, they're like, you know, who knows? Maybe when I'm 22, maybe when I'm 23, I'll hit my athletic peak and I'll just like magically go to the league. You know, it's always a possibility. And then what happens is once you start seeing all these athletes who are infinitely better and younger, uh, the reality of the situation sets in and the guy realizes, and myself included, that you're not going to any league. You're never going to be a pro. And uh, all of the best athletes in the world are now officially younger than you. What is he yapping about? I still can't follow. This guy right here, definitely not going to be in the sports. He can't even cut the pepper correctly. I don't even know what he's doing with it. He's kind of just playing with it. Like, yeah, not everybody's going to be an athlete. Did this guy like run out of dating advice? Now he has to start talking about sports and dudes. 
Actually, his dating advice isn't even advice, so I wouldn't even call it that. Um, I guess it does make sense. Like a lot of dudes like expect that since they were good when they were younger at some sport, that they're going to become some major league player. I mean, if you are very good and you really work hard for it, yeah, you can do that. Not everybody. This guy says that this is the most humbling thing for a man, that you can't play sport when you're older. Oh my gosh. You can't do professional sport when you're older? Oh, look at that. He cuts only peppers. <laughs> Is this all this guy eats, like peppers? Guessing his daily routine. Wake up, make a video. Cut peppers while making the video. Eat the peppers. The noon, make a video, cut peppers, eat the peppers. <laughs> Same thing for dinner. So this guy is probably just one giant pepper. Oh my God, wait. He put in the background, cut a wood. Bro's really, he's really trying to like make the most of this hate. Honestly, this guy's more of like a pick me. All right, hot take dating edition. A super toxic relationship is honestly one of the best things that can happen to you in the grand scheme of your life. Because yes, is it horrible at the time? Yes, do you feel awful? Can it hurt your self-esteem, trust issues? Yes, these are all cons everybody knows about. But also just makes you appreciate like the great things once you have them. Because if you just have them initially, you just take them for granted. You don't realize how great it is. Have the super toxic relationship first. Really appreciate the good partner when they come around. My gosh, well, no. Um, toxic relationship is like the worst thing that could probably happen. It literally ruins your perception of what love is. And it like ruins your perception of like a relationship in general. Like, even if you do find a better partner later, you're going to be kind of like scarred from a different experience. That it's going to be hard to even like enjoy it because you're so focus on the fact that it could happen again. And I know he's saying like, it could it could like make you appreciate another, a better one more, which I guess so. But at the same time, it's like, it's hard to get over it. Like some people never get over it. It's hard for them to even date at all. Last thing, this guy has like two videos of him with a mask on, like a face mask. Let me show you. I know. Please tell me you understand that. Anyway, I think that's enough of that guy. To be honest, this guy, I think this is a mild case of bad dating advice. It's not like a horrible guy that's like, like Russell Hartley, I remember that. Curtis Connor video, I think. He gives out really, I don't know, mediocre information that most of the time I wouldn't even, I don't really know what I would do with that information. The whole pick me, cutty bo, cutty bo, cutty bo, cutty bo. Boy. thing is really funny to me. This guy definitely needs to work on his content because what the heck is going on? Kind of don't want to eat any bell peppers anytime soon. The toxic relationship one is just kind of a fact. Yes, because something bad happened and then you have something good. Now you're going to appreciate the good because that bad thing happened and it makes you want to appreciate good. But it's weird to say that a toxic relationship is one of the best things that could ever happen. Anyway, um, I am done with this and I am going to eat dinner and not eat bell pepper. Anyway, um, I hope everyone has a good day. Um, please like my video. Hope everyone likes my video, cut a board. I was very bored, so I made this video. Cut a board. Okay, bye. <laughs>